If you can't start your day without a cup of coffee, then you're probably familiar with your old friend, the coffee maker. A drip coffee maker, one of the most common types, automates the process of making coffee by heating water and dripping it over ground coffee beans to extract flavor. But have you ever wondered how the water gets from the reservoir over to the coffee grounds in the filter basket? How does everything heat up so quickly, and most importantly, how do they even make these things in the first place? Coffee beans as we know them are actually the seeds of the fruit of the coffee plant, called coffee cherries, and these popular plants have been cultivated by man for hundreds of years. The two most commonly grown species of coffee plants are coffee arabica and coffee conifera, or robusta coffee. Our ancestors were able to enjoy coffee after a significant amount of manual labor, but thanks to the industrial revolution, now you can just pour some cold water into the coffee maker, push a button, and your coffee will be ready within a matter of minutes. Before we get into the manufacturing process, let's take a look at what happens after you pour in cold water and push the switch on a coffee maker. Inside the reservoir, a heating element heats the water to boiling. At the bottom of the bucket, there's a hole. There's a white tube that leads up from below the reservoir base, carrying the hot water up to the drip area. Water arrives here from the white hot water tube and is sprayed over the coffee grounds. In some coffee makers, the water comes out of the hose onto a perforated plastic disc called the drip area and simply falls through the holes into the coffee grounds. The water flows through, infusing with the coffee and falls into a carafe. As far as the making of a coffee maker is concerned, well, that part's a bit more complicated. But let's break it down. The journey of crafting a coffee maker commences with conceptualization. Designers brainstorm features, aesthetics, and functionalities desired in the final product. They consider market trends, consumer preferences, and technological advancements to create a blueprint for the coffee maker. This part is important because it helps each brand stand out. Once the design is conceptualized, engineers step in to translate the vision into a tangible product. They analyze the feasibility of the design, ensuring it meets safety standards, functionality requirements, and manufacturing constraints. Engineering software aids in creating detailed schematics and simulations to refine the design. Many components of a coffee maker, including the outer casing, water reservoir, and drip tray, are typically made from plastics. Engineers choose plastics based on factors like durability, heat resistance, and aesthetic appeal. Common plastics used include ABS, acrylonitrile butadiene styrene, and PP, polypropylene. These are often fabricated using injection molding. In this process, granular plastic is melted and injected into a mold cavity under high pressure. Once cooled, the plastic solidifies, taking the shape of the mold. Injection molding offers high precision, rapid production, and consistency in part quality. Metal components such as heating elements, brewing baskets, and internal tubing require materials with excellent heat connectivity and structural integrity. Copper is a popular choice for the heating element, whereas stainless steel or aluminum are the metals of choice for the other metal components. Why copper, though? Wouldn't aluminum or steel be cheaper? Well, the heating element ensures that the water gets delivered at the right temperature and is stable all over the brewing, so it's an incredibly important component for the coffee maker. You see, for the right brewing, the temperature has to be an average between 92 and 96 degrees Celsius. When you overheat your water, you will burn the coffee so it will taste bitter. Conversely, when the water is too cold, the coffee will taste sour. This is the reason why many high-end coffee maker manufacturers prefer copper over aluminum, which is cheaper but not as effective. Metal components undergo various fabrication techniques. For instance, heating elements are formed using processes like stamping and bending, while internal tubing is welded or brazed together. Machining processes such as milling and turning are employed to achieve intricate shapes and precise dimensions in metal parts. For the manufacture of the heat-proof glass carafe, the process begins with the selection of high-quality borosilicate glass, which is renowned for its exceptional thermal resistance and durability. Borosilicate glass contains silica and boron trioxide, giving it superior heat resistance compared to regular glass. The selected raw materials are melted in a furnace at high temperatures exceeding 1500 degrees Celsius or 2700 degrees Fahrenheit. This molten glass is carefully monitored for consistency and quality to ensure uniform properties in the final product. Then, the molten glass is poured into molds and pressed using hydraulic or pneumatic presses. This process yields uniform shapes and dimensions with high efficiency. 
After forming, the glass undergoes annealing, a controlled cooling process to relieve internal stresses and enhance strength and stability. Finally, carafes undergo additional surface treatments for aesthetic or functional purposes. Assembly of coffee makers is predominantly automated to enhance efficiency and consistency. Automated assembly lines integrate robotics, conveyors, and assembly stations to piece together the myriad of components of the coffee maker. Each step in the assembly process is meticulously choreographed to ensure seamless integration of parts. This factory starts with printing some ink on the base of the machine. This printing includes brand information among other things. Then the base itself is put together. Side handles are inserted so that consumers can lift the machine. Next comes the hot plate where the glass carafe will rest and can be heated. Next, a column is built which contains the heating elements and the cold water container. While automation streamlines most assembly tasks, some intricate operations require manual intervention. Skilled technicians handle delicate tasks like wiring electrical components and calibrating mechanisms. These are designed so they can be simply snapped together. Workers standing at the assembly line each snap in a part as it comes to them, and the whole line may have 40 to 80 workers each doing a specialized job. Quality control is paramount throughout the manufacturing process to uphold product integrity. Inspection checkpoints are strategically placed at various stages, where trained inspectors scrutinize components for defects, dimensional accuracy, and adherence to specifications. Functional tests such as brewing simulations and electrical performance evaluations validate the operational prowess of each coffee maker. Manufacturers employ statistical techniques like SPC to monitor and optimize production processes. By collecting and analyzing data from production lines, they identify trends, detect anomalies, and implement corrective actions to maintain consistency and minimize defects. Once coffee makers pass stringent quality checks, they undergo packaging for shipment. Packaging serves multiple purposes, including protection during transit, branding communication, and retail display. Coffee makers are nestled within protective packaging materials accompanied by instruction manuals, warranty cards, and promotional materials. In recent years, manufacturers have embraced sustainable practices to mitigate environmental impact. This includes using recyclable materials, optimizing energy consumption and manufacturing processes, and implementing eco-friendly packaging solutions. Additionally, some companies offer recycling programs for end-of-life products to promote circularity. Life Cycle Assessment LCA, is employed to evaluate the environmental footprint of coffee makers from cradle to grave. By analyzing factors like raw material extraction, manufacturing processes, product use, and disposal methods, manufacturers gain insights into areas for improvement and can design more environmentally friendly products. That's all for how a coffee maker is made, but if you liked this video and want to see more, check out our channel for tons of other videos.